Next, we take a look of the concept of the demand elasticities. In elasticity, we basically have uh, three basic elasticity. They are called price elasticity of demand. So the definition is E x p x, which is equal to partial x partial p x times p x over x. So this is basically percentage change in the quantity derived by percentage change in the price. Okay. So in your high school or your elementary micro lectures, you know that if it lies between negative infinity to negative one, we call this elastic. So that means when price decrease, the output will increase. As a result, sales total revenue will increase. And if it's ranged from negative one to zero, so this is called inelastic. Then, when price increase, quantity decrease, total revenue will increase. Okay, so this is what you learned in the past. So next is the cross price elasticity. So this is defined as E x p y equal to partial x partial p y times p y over x. So this is percentage change in x derived by percentage change in the price of another goods. So it can be positive zero and negative. If it is positive, good x and y are in the relation of substitute. If it is negative, they are having a relation of complement. And if they are zero, they are not related. Okay, so positive means that when the price of good Y increased, our product will have will be sold easily. Okay, there will be increase in the number of our products sold. As a result, they are substitutes. So finally, is the income elasticity. So this is defined as E X I equal to partial X partial I times I over X. So if it is greater than 1, lies between 0 and 1, and less than 1, so it has various, uh, less than 0, it has various implications. If it is greater than 1, we call this luxury. If it lies between 0 and 1, that means when income increases, you still buy more, but less than the, pro the proportion of increasing income. We call this necessity. Finally, if it's less than zero, that means when income increases, you buy less. We call this inferior. Okay. So this is three basic concepts. So next, let's elaborate more the price elasticity of demand. Okay. So this is the, what we learned in the past. We we use some basically some qualitative description to show that if it's elastic price lower, total revenue increase. If it's inelastic, price increase, total revenue increase. Now we use a more robust way, sophisticated way, okay? So the total expenditure on X is PX times number of good X. So if we want to see that when there's change in price of good X, how will this total revenue change? So you do the partial PX, partial PX. What we get will be px partial x partial px plus x okay and then we do a trick so we multiply we multiply a px okay then derived by x after that we multiply x and derived by px Okay. Then the remaining I keep it. So by doing this, the px can be cancelled. Okay. What is we what is remaining is the. This is e x p x the price elasticity of demand. Then you have one more x remains plus x. Then this is equal to e x p x plus one times x therefore here you can see that okay if 
elastic. So EXPX would be less than negative 1. So partial PX6, partial PX would be negative. Okay, so the code vice versa. If EXPX is inelastic, it is greater than negative 1, smaller than 0. Then partial PX6, partial PX will be greater than 0. Well, some people will don't select the negative value. They put the absolute value to the elasticity concept. But if you put the absolute value, then this expression will be more difficult to interpret. Okay, so it's better for you to use, to don't forget to use the negative sign for the price elasticity of demand. Because usually we assume the price of good X and quantity demanded for good of good X is inversely related. So next, let's further talk about the price elasticity. Okay. So in the previous videos, we know that for the last key equation, we have rank x rank p x equal to rank x. Rang x rang p x minus rang x rang i times x. Okay, so this is the last key decompositions. <coughs> well, actually, you can do some algebraic manipulations. So you can multiply <coughs> Okay, you can keep the same things Then you multiply something, okay So you multiply the px divided by x and here again multiply px derived by x finally here you multiply by px derived by x <laughs> okay so at the later at the last part you still have two so px i put here multiply i derived by i okay here you can see that run x run px this is the price elasticity of demand and equal to the price elasticity of demand in the compensated demand curves then minus okay you put this x into here and this is the income elasticity of demand times pxx divided by I. this is the share of income spent on good x Therefore, you can see that the Marshallian elasticity of demand is equal to the compensated elasticity of minus something. So these two will be similar if and only if the income elasticity is small or the share of income spent on goods is small. Okay, so this is how you rel relate the compensated demand curve and the uncompensated demand curve. So next we talk we will dip in to further into the elasticity concept. Okay. So based on the elasticity you still have some uh extension about the concept of elasticity. Okay, so in demand function you can derive various relations in, in terms of the elasticity. First is homogeneity. So finally, you will get the uh, zero is equal to e x p x the the demand elasticity plus the cross by elasticity plus the income elasticity. So this is because x is equal to a function of p x, p y and i. Okay, and this is homogeneous to degree zero. So you multiply the p x p 
PY and I by T, you will get the same answer, okay? And I do the differentiate of X, I will get partial X, partial PX, DPX, plus partial X, partial PY, DPY, plus partial X, partial I, DI. Then if I derive both side by X, I will get EXPX plus EXPY plus EXI and okay if you do the total derivatives of this part you will get T times EXPX plus EXPY plus EXI okay as it is assumed that T is some positive constant so to make these two equations to to be okay, okay. So we need to assume state set is equal to zero. So we got the result: the cross price elasticity plus the cross price elasticity plus own price elasticity plus the income elasticity equal to zero. Okay. This is the first relation. The second relation is called the angle aggregation. So this is say that i is equal to x x times e x i plus s y times e y i the income elasticity of good x multiplied by a share of the income spent on good x plus the income elasticity of good y plus the share of income spent on good y is equal to one okay so this is derived from the budget constraint first you differentiate with respect to i okay next oh you multiply it Multiply an i derive an x, then multiply x derive an i back, okay, to keep it unchanged. And for the py part, I do the same things, okay. I multiply i derived by i, multiply y derived by y, okay. So the whole expression is unchanging. So px x divided by i is the share of income span of good x. This is income elasticity of good x plus share of good y plus the income elasticity of good y. It is equal to 1. Okay. Finally, it's the could not aggregations. So he here it states that share of good money spent on x times the price elasticity plus share of money spent on y times the cross price elasticity is a negative of the share of income spent on good x. Again, it is derived from the budget constraint. Now, I differentiate with respect to Px. So, I will get So, since i is not a function of something, i is exogenous in this model. Okay. Here, we multiply the px derived by x, then times x derived by i. For the second part, I multiply the px derived by i. Okay, so basically, I just multiply px derived but derived by i in both sides. So here. I multiply a px derived by i, then t derived by y and times a y. Okay. Then for the right hand side, I multiply px over i is still the zero. Okay. So basically, I just multiply this term, this term, and this term. Okay. 
then y divided by y is, is 1, x divided by x is 1, so it keep it unchanging. So based on this manipulation, I get sx exi plus sx plus. Now, if I put y into here and i divided by it, I get s y e y p x equal to 0. Okay, then I derive the result. I just put this plus sx to the right hand side and I get this result. Okay, so this is the could not aggregation.